The ties. That bind. The ties. That break. Is she all right? Yeah, she's just nervous about driving on that road again. After what happened last time. Oh, I see. Those men will never bother you again. You need not worry. Oh, okay. Well, um, thank you. That's, uh, good to know. I never saw you run so fast in your life. <laughs> I know, and Mama still caught me and whipped my little tail. <laughs> and that was the last time you stole a piece of pie. She hadn't even cut it yet, Lizzie. It was still cooling on the table. I don't know what I was thinking. Now, there, is a piece of pie, worth stealing. Good morning, handsome. Good morning, Miss Valise and Miss Rosie. I placed the breakfast leftovers in the refrigerator and I'm leaving now. Thank you, Raphael. Everything was delicious as always. Yes, very delicious. Lunch and dinner are in the walk-in cooler. Miss Rosie, it was nice meeting you. I'll see you tomorrow, Miss Valise. Okay, bye, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, baby. <laughs> Girl, you know you are old enough to be his mother. Please. I'm a cougar now. A cougar? Are you messing with these young men now? An old man can't do nothing for me. Except point me to a young one. <laughs> you are a mess. You should see the two guys I have back in New York. Did you say, two? Yep. You have to have a team these days, so you always have someone to spend time with, but never get too attached to them. Well, I sure hope you are using protection. Lizzie, you need to loosen up. When's the last time you got laid? Rosie, don't talk like that. Oh girl, please, we are both over 50. Now stop acting like you don't get yours. Well, I have, been seeing someone lately. Ooh, now you're talking. I want all the details. How is he in bed? Rosie, you are just too much. Okay. Then I'll tell you about one of mine. He's 39, works out every day, and can make his chest muscles dance. And girl, he has so much energy in bed. Thank God. Saved by the bell. Hello. Good morning. Hi babe. Good morning. I hope you don't mind. I let myself in. I don't mind at all. That's why you have a key. Good morning beautiful. Henry, this is my sister, Rosaline. Rosie, this is Henry. Rosaline, it's a pleasure to meet you. You too. Belize was just telling me about you. You came just before she was getting to the good part. I'm sorry to have interrupted you. Sweetheart, I didn't know that you had company. Don't worry, you're fine. Can I fix you a plate? I can't stay. I just wanted to stop by, so that I could start my day with your smile. Rosie, I'll be back. No problem. I'm going to walk Henry to the door. Okay, sure. Lizzie girl, you certainly seem to have it all. Maybe even a little too much. So it sounds like the prosecutor doesn't have much of a case at all against Mrs. Pierce. The prosecutor is relying heavily on the statements made by the victim. You meant to say the alleged victim, the hotel housekeeper. Yes, of course. The alleged victim. She claims that Mrs. Pierce struck her when she accidentally knocked over her bottle of expensive perfume, causing it to break. That's a damn lie. I accidentally knocked that bottle over myself. It was already on the floor when she came into the room with the blanket. I was going to ask her to clean up the broken glass, but she just started screaming as soon as she came in the room. Yes, well she tells a different story. But there are no witnesses or evidence to corroborate her story. 
and there was no bruising or marks on her face. Yes. She claims that Mrs. Pierce struck her in the chest, but that it didn't leave a bruise. In her police statement, she said that Mrs. Pierce slapped her. Yes, that was correct. People don't get slapped in the chest. Her statements are inconsistent. Ah. Oh. Let me check my notes. Have you interviewed her yet? Do they conduct depositions in this country? Ah. Oh. Um. I. Ah. Oh. Um. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry. My English is not so good. Uh, hi Mrs. Tyler. Um, is Shannon here? Yes she is, but she doesn't want to see you. Yeah I know, but it's just a misunderstanding. That's all. Okay, come in. Shannon, you have a guest. What are you doing here, Alex? I had to come here because you wouldn't take my calls, and you wouldn't open the door when I came to your apartment. Most people would take that as a hint. Would you please let me explain? She was in your condo first thing in the morning, and you were trying to hide her in the bathroom. I think I got it. She came by right after you left, to talk business. Then why were you trying to hide her? Because I know that you get upset whenever she's around. I'm not stupid Alex. You were acting like you have something to hide, and you don't ask your business associate to hide in your bathroom. Can we sit down for a minute? No. Whatever you have to say, just say it. I don't want Eve, I want you. I'm in love with you. But, something did happen when we were in China. You asshole. Wait, wait, it was just a kiss. You kissed her. We had been drinking, and, it meant nothing. I stopped it before it went any further. So, what kind of a kiss was it? Huh, what? Was it just a peck? Was there tongue? Were you standing up or lying down? Clothes off, or on. Paint me a picture. Yeah, that's what I thought. And now everything is supposed to be okay, because you didn't actually sleep with her. Shannon. You know what Alex, you should have slept with her. At least then, maybe it would have been worth destroying our relationship. I'm being honest with you. Doesn't that mean anything? Are you really being honest Alex? Or are you lying to yourself about your feelings for Eve? If she really meant nothing to you, then nothing would have happened. Nothing important did happen. Something did happen Alex. You broke my heart. I am, so, so sorry. What did you want to discuss? Angela, my love, I apologize for the incompetence shown today by Mr. Servada. He did not meet my expectations for the excellence I expect in handling your case. I have already terminated his services. I sent him a text message during our car ride home. I see. Once again, you seem to have everything under control. You even hire and fire my lawyer without consulting me. Minha Querida, I just want to ease your troubles for you. To help you and protect you. I apologize if I have overstepped. I am truly grateful for the hospitality that you have shown to me and now to my family as well. But, I am not a woman who needs a man to take care of me. Being treated like some weak-minded and brainless woman, or a prisoner, is not a feeling I enjoy. Oh, I am so very sorry. In my sincere desire to love and protect you, it seems I have been suffocating you instead. I will choose my own new lawyer, with Dana's help. And I am perfectly able to pay my own legal bills. Yes, of course, if that's what you prefer. It is. Now, I'd like to take a walk alone on the beach. I need some time alone with my thoughts. Of course. Anything you want, my love. I can't believe that William had another affair that I didn't know about. I swear William if you were still alive, I'd rip you apart. You swore to me that Belize was the only one. You swore it on our son's lives. You fudging bastard. I could kill you. I feel like such a fool. 
Maybe I did make the wrong choice 40 years ago. Emilio certainly seems to still love me. I don't think he would have ever been unfaithful to me. But, I can't ignore the fact that he is obviously behind these efforts to keep me trapped here in Rio. Being married to a cheetah was painful, but a fatal attraction husband could have been deadly. But, that conniving, little lying witch Rosie Mason. Looking back, I definitely should have seen through her lies. Who are you and what is this about? I'm Rosie Mason. I'm Valise Mason's sister. Who is Valise Mason? She's a singer at Billy's Jazz Club, where your husband performs. I know where my husband performs. Why are you here? I know that Valise is my sister, but right is right and wrong is wrong. So, I came here to tell you that my sister has been having an affair with your husband. Liar. Get out of my home. It's true. I swear it. In fact, Belize is six months pregnant with William's child. Get the hell out of my house now. Before I hurt you. I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you. But if it was my husband, I would want to know. If you value your life, you will leave without saying another word to me. Damn it, William. Well, what do you think of my mother's case? It's just a case of she said, she said. If she had a better attorney, she could have probably already had these charges dropped by now. There is absolutely no evidence supporting the hotel housekeeper's story that your mother slapped her. Emilio claims that he got her the best lawyer in Rio. If that's the best Rio has to offer, my mother is in real trouble. I'm not sure that man really is a lawyer. And if he is, then he's one of the worst ones I've ever met. He's completely incompetent. Maybe they do things differently here. He hasn't filed any of the appropriate motions and when I asked him about the case, he didn't seem to understand the most basic principles of law. Could it have been just a language barrier? He understood what I was saying. He just didn't know the answers. Why would Emilio hire a bad lawyer for my mother? I know this is going to sound crazy, but, I think Emilio is behind this whole thing. Think about it, your mother's passport and cell phone disappear in his home. Then when she moves into a hotel, she gets accused by one of the housekeepers of assault. The housekeeper's story is as flimsy as evidence tape, and contradicts itself in at least three different places. Then he hires one of the worst lawyers in Brazil to represent her. But why would he do that? To keep her here. In jail. Not jail. Here. In his villa. Your mother said that she was released into his custody. She's on house arrest in his home. That gives him plenty of time to woo her, and to make her fall in love with him again. Then after she's in love, he gets the housekeeper or the prosecutor to dismiss the charges and they live happily ever after, together. <laughs> I love my mother, but I can't imagine that any man would go through this much trouble to be with her. You have to admit, there's something, unsettling, about Emilio. Yeah, I keep trying to tell myself that it's just cultural differences, but, there is something. Like earlier today, the way he said that we didn't have to worry about those men anymore. Then we saw one of their trucks burned out on the side of the road on our way to the attorney's office. It might not have been the same truck. You're jumping to a lot of conclusions without any evidence. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just being a little paranoid. Dana, I, well, um. Yes. Did you want to say something? Good evening. Good evening. Breaking news. The bodies of eight men were discovered today, buried in shallow graves near where their burned out truck was found on the side of the road. The two men in these photos are the leaders of a notorious militia group that has been terrorizing the good citizens of Rio for years. The police believe the murders were part of a turf war between two militia groups. You wanted evidence. I give you Exhibit A. 